Hi and welcome back to Afternoon Literature. I'm Cassie and today we're here for another book report. So book report is a series that I do where I take either an aspect of books, review a book or a series and I try to look at it in under 10 minutes. So I feel that today's video needs a content warning. Today I'm going to be discussing rape within novels, how it may be used as a character motivator or a plot point and what is bad about this. I will be discussing rape quite openly and so if you aren't comfortable with that I suggest that you skip this video but please go and check out one of my others. If you're still here with me then today this is the topic that we're going to be discussing and in particular I'm going to be using Traces Blades by Sebastian de Castell to give you the examples of how rape has either been used as a character motivator, a plot point, or in some instances just outright not acknowledged and why that should not happen in fiction. There is a big difference between a book which actually focuses on someone who has been raped and they are a rape survivor and what you are reading is a story of their survival or how they have got over it or the way in which it's affected them. That is a completely different type of story entirely and that is not what I'm discussing today. What I'm discussing is where rape is used within a book to make a character become more resilient, to make a character become more strong or as part of their motivation. To give you an example of this, that would be when the entirety of a character's motivations or characteristics are made up of the fact that rape was an aspect of their background. Valkyrie van Valmont is a character who was once in love with his wife, had a really good life, but unfortunately the ducal system meant that he lives in a very brutal world where dukes can just have what they want. The Duke came along and decided that what he wanted was Falkyr's wife. Although um, Falkyr's wife does not put up a fight at this point, and although Falkyr doesn't either, the Duke does rape her because she knows she has no choice. It is not consensual at all. On leaving, the Duke is then poked and prodded by the King and encouraged to bring Falkyr's wife along with him for the use of the soldiers to do with whatever they want. This leads to the brutal gang rape of Aline in a bar where she eventually fights back and on fighting back is killed and Falkyr finds this out. This is not on page but it is brutal, it is explained and it is very vicious. It shows an incredibly dark and cruel world. However, the point for me that is the problem is that this novel already shows an incredibly dark and cruel world and I don't think we necessarily needed to see a brutal gang rape to realise that this was pretty awful as it was. On top of this, Falcio then uses this as his whole motivation to get revenge and vengeance on people and this is what forms the original as like creation of the great coats in the first place. Falkyr who has already heard about the great coats and loves them and already had this as his dream so he could easily have another motivation to become a great coat now goes on an epic journey to get revenge to try and kill everyone who killed his wife and raped his wife and in doing so this is what ultimately leads him to becoming a great coat and eventually seeking justice the people around the world. It's like, look at how bad the system is and how much it has wronged you, so now Falkyr feels like he must change the system. There are two big issues here with this. The first issue, Falkyr wanted to change the system anyway. He knew that this was dark, he knew that this was brutal, and he'd always been dreamed of being a great coach, so he really didn't need to see this in order for Falkyr to want to change that. The second one is that along the way Falcio loses himself so entirely and it is never dealt with the fact that when Falcio loses himself in this way he essentially victim blames. He becomes a vigilante along the way which is questionable as it is and then he actually victim blames and shames his own wife. To give you a quote he says sometimes Aline would tell me I had just killed someone and it wasn't going to bring her back to life. And I would ask her if, now that she was dead, she was going to bed him in the afterlife. That wasn't a very nice thing to say, but I wasn't thinking very clearly and I was just imagining her anyway. Um, I understand the anger that someone might feel in this situation and how easily it is to take it out, but I don't think victim blaming is ever okay for us to really show. Um, and I also don't think saying 
that wasn't a very nice thing to say, is enough of an acknowledgement of the fact that victim blaming really should be condemned. So I didn't feel at all comfortable with this. This has only been used to further the idea of Falcio's character and give him a backstory that felt more complete other than I just want to be a knight. I don't think you necessarily need that. I think the world around him is so clearly cruel enough considering there's on the page torture and so on that we really don't need to see this as well in order just to motivate him. Secondly it's then used as a plot point as in if this hadn't happened, this part of the plot would never ever be allowed to occur. Uh, there would be no reason for Falcio to have visited all these different people. There'd be no reason for him to have got to the king, and the king was a saviour. And in doing that, that plot point is incredibly weak. It is lazy writing, and it's like someone's just turned around and said, Oh, how can I point out that this is so cruel and motivate someone to be to want to change things? I know, rape. There we go. The second aspect of it is seeing rape that is unacknowledged. You've now used rape as a plot point, you've now pointed out the cruelty of it and how disgusting and terrible it is. You then can't show another rape on the page this time and then not acknowledge that it even happened. Unfortunately that's exactly what happens in the second aspect part of this book. So that we really don't <laughs> in the second part of this book, Falkyo has um, suffered some really great tortures, he um, is completely broken, his spirit is broken, his body is broken, and he comes across a Athalia, Athalia, who is kind of like a sister, who heals people, but they also are prostitutes. So they heal people physically, but they also heal people spiritually, and the idea is that part of that spiritual healing comes through sexual um, pleasure. So now we've used sex and rape as a way to completely and utterly destroy someone, now we're going to use the trope of sex to save, which is just something that I think is not a good trope to use, an incredibly lazy way to use it. Falkia has is still in love with Aline, he is not over her death in any way. The sister has decided, Natalia has decided, that the only way for Falcio to get over her death is to sleep with someone else, which in itself is just incredibly problematic, but not what I'm talking about today. Um, and she also has decided that he must be with her and therefore she is going to do this no matter what. So, she is looking after his wounds, she's washing his body, so on putting like a salve on it and stuff like that to make sure his wounds are okay um but then she straddles him and lays him down um and he i think this is the bit that like bothered me so much she ties him down so she actually wraps something around his wrist and pulls it against the headboard she shackles his arms she ties his legs down he's unable to move he's unable to get away and then we see her say to him please i said stop please stop she's just tied him up stop i repeated i'm afraid not Salkyo. i do not believe the violence inside your body is greater than the compassion in your mind even when you're angry and hurt so basically you can't save yourself so i'm going to save you and i save people through sex so i'm going to rape you and you're not allowed to say stop i'm going to ignore it the, um, as she is actually physically raping him because this is on page he says he starts to cry he's in tears at this point um, he wants to pull back for her but he can't he can't move he said no and stopped to her quite a few times and in the end as it finally finishes the first thing he says is the straps I said take off the straps so the first thing he wants to do is escape now, we've just witnessed an on-the-page rape, but the biggest aspect of this is it is never acknowledged. Straight after this, Italia tells Falcio that he belongs with her and they are soulmates and they should be together forever. And Falcio says, yeah, that's an option. And afterwards, he starts to think of, oh, I could have just stayed with Italia and I could have been happy with her. And he actually thinks it's an option that he should have stayed with his rapist. They don't call it rape, they don't acknowledge the fact that he did not give consent and was tied down and was not allowed 
to get away from this situation and um, they've just acted like this has fixed him this has fixed his brokenness despite the fact that his brokenness originally came from the rape of his wife in the first place so rape is used to break him and rape is now used to fix him and this is so lazy if all of this novel the women are abused they do show some strong women but you know it's lean rape a lean abuse that is a motivator for Falkir's character but now at the end when we see Falkir be raped we can't acknowledge it we can't acknowledge that a man has been abused in this way and that is so unfair and dismissive of abuse that happens unfortunately too regularly to men as well it's a form of toxic masculinity that I just did not like and didn't feel had any place in this novel okay so for me by the end of this although I feel like rape is something that can feature in books because unfortunately it features in real life I did not feel comfortable in any way with the way in which it was used in Traitor's Blades, Fasting to Cast Out, rape to motivate and to move the plot on and then eventually rape to save and it is completely unacknowledged that this is non-consensual rape and therefore seeing this on the page means that no one has those trigger warnings that they need or the conclusion at the end that we need to tell you that this is wrong and this is not the way things are or should ever be. <laughs> all in all, I would be incredibly careful reading this book. There's obviously massive content warnings for rape in here. Um, does that mean I completely dislike the book or anything like that? No. But this aspect of the book I feel was incredibly ill used. Okay, that's all from me. So this is the end of my book report today. If you want to see more book reports like this, then please subscribe to my channel because I post one every week. And if you like this video, then give me a like down below so that I know to continue making them. Have a good week.